Welcome to Mastermind with me, John Humphreys. Five contenders tonight because it's the semi-finals and our specialist subjects, a great post-war celebration of Britishness, the man who led the fight to abolish slavery, our most important lexicographer, the novels that lifted the lid on how the upper-class English behaved in the last century and an influential record label. Our five contenders get a minute and a half for those subjects and two minutes for their general knowledge. And the clock is king, so let's get on with it. And ask our first contender to join us, please. And your name is... Nicholas Young. Your occupation? Tour guide. And your chosen subject? The Life and Times of Samuel Johnson. The writer most famous for his Dictionary of the English Language, who's been described as arguably the most distinguished man of letters in English history. Here we go, 90 seconds. Johnson rented a house in a London square after he'd been commissioned to produce his Dictionary of the English Language. Which square? Gough Square. Yep. Johnson opened a school in Edial in 1735, but it soon failed and he moved to London accompanied by one of his pupils. What was his name? David Garrett. Yes. As a two-year-old, he was taken from Lichfield to London to be touched by Queen Anne as a supposed cure for what disease? Scrofula. Yes. Under what title were his twice-weekly essays published starting in March 1750? They were modelled on The Spectator and he was paid two guineas per issue. The Rambler. Yes. Johnson's first original work is a poem published in May 1738. It imitates a satirical verse by which Roman poet? Juvenal. Yep. In what year was Johnson's dictionary published? It was eight years after he first began compiling it. 1755. Yes. Which painter and friend did he accompany on a visit to the artist's home county of Devon in the summer of 1762? Reynolds. Yes. From 1766, Johnson privately helped a professor of law at Oxford University with the lectures that he had to write. What was his name? Scarsdale? Chambers. Which capital city did Johnson visit for the first time in September 1775? He said of it, it is not so fine a place as you would expect. Paris. Yes. Johnson intended to make his fortune from a tragedy he'd part written, but it was not staged for over ten years. What's the title of that play? Irene. Yep. What was the title of the last major literary production undertaken by Johnson? It was completed in 1781. Lives of the Poets. Yes. What was the name of the Jamaican former slave who became Johnson's faithful servant and was the major beneficiary in his will? Francis Barber. Indeed it was. No passes, Nicholas. You have scored 11 points. <laughs> Contender, please. And your name? Uh, Sue Duffy. Your occupation? Retired librarian. And your chosen subject? The Dance to the Music of Time novels of Anthony Powell. The 12 novels that look at life in 20th century England. Starting now, who painted the picture that A Dance to the Music of Time takes its title from? It's mentioned in the opening paragraphs of the first novel. Poussin. Yep. Yeah. Which novel in the series begins with Nick Jenkins attending a literary conference in Venice? Temporary King. Yes. What is the name of the hotel where Jenkins' uncle Giles was staying when he died? The Bellevue. Yes. The Valley of Bones ends with Jenkins commanded to report to divisional headquarters. Who is the Deputy Assistant Adjutant General that he's appointed to serve under? Uh, Widmerpool. Yep. Yeah. What word is emblazoned on the T-shirts of both Rusty and Fiona when they first appear in the last book of the series? Harmony. Yes. What is the name of the archaeological site in Hearing Secret Harmonies where Scorpio Murtlock attacks Widmerpool during a cult ritual? The Devil's Fingers. Yep. The Military Philosophers opens with Jenkins working at Whitehall as an assistant to Major Peniston in Allied Liaison. Which of Britain's allies is he dealing with? Uh, Polish. Yes. What is the name of the castle owned by the business magnate Sir Magnus Donners where Jenkins lunches in a buyer's market? Star Water. Yes. In A Question of Upbringing, Charles Stringham states that a philosopher had fed mostly on grass and made his house on a dunghill. Which philosopher? Rousseau. Heraclitus. Fields of Amaranth is the masterpiece of an author who dies in the spring of 1937. Which author? St John Clark. Yes. In the acceptance world, who interrupts Widmerpool's speech at the old boys' dinner when he has a suspected stroke? Le Bar. Yep. Sir Magnus Donners photographs his guests as they perform tableau of the seven deadly sins after a dinner party that he hosts. What sin does Jenkins perform? Um, sloth. Yes, he does indeed. No passes, Sue. You have... 11 points. Mm -hmm. And 
our next contender, please. And your name is? Roy Smith. Your occupation? Currently unemployed. And your chosen subject? Two-tone records. That's the Ska and Reggae label, founded in 1979, in 90 seconds, starting now. The specials reached number one in the UK singles charts in July 81 with a song written by Two-Tone Records founder Jerry Dammers. What song? Ghost Town. Yep. What is the name of the fictional rude boy in the Two-Tone logo who's dressed in a black suit, white shirt, black tie and loafers and was based on a picture of the reggae star Pete Tosh? Bob Jabsco. Yep. The Two-Tone single, The Boiler, was performed by the special AKA and the singer from the all-female ska group, The Body Snatchers. What's her name? Rhoda Dakar. Yep. What was the title of the first single by Madness, released through Two-Tone in 1979? It was the band's only single release on the label. The Prince. Yep. Who directed the 81 documentary film Dance Craze? The soundtrack includes songs by The Specials, The Beat and Bad Manners and was released on Two Tone the same year. Pass. Who was the drummer with The Specials who gave his initials to the name of the group JB's All Stars? John Bradbury. Yep. Which single by Elvis Costello and The Attractions was initially pressed as a two-tone single? It had to be given away free at concerts because contractual disagreements meant it couldn't be sold. I can't stand up for falling down. Yes. What's the title of the only album The Selector released on Two Tone before they left the label in 1980? On my radio. Too much pressure. The special, a.k.a. Live EP, gave the specials their first number one single in the UK singles chart. The lead song, Too Much, Too Young, was recorded at a gig in which London venue? Well, I see him. Yes. Who was the guitarist with The Selector who wrote their top 20 single, Three Minute Hero? Pass. The Body Snatchers released two singles on the two-tone label. Let's Do Rock Steady was the first. What was the second called? Too Experienced. No, it's Easy Life. You had two passes, Roy. Neil Davis was the guitarist with the selector and the director of that uh, 81 documentary dance craze was Joe Massot. You have scored seven points. <laughs> Next contender, please. And your name is Mark Grant. Occupation? Count. And chosen subject. Festival of Britain 951. A great celebration of British art, science and industry starting now. Which cabinet minister was put in charge of organising the festival when the Labour government agreed in 1947 to celebrate the centenary of the Great Exhibition of 1851? Herbert Morrison. Yes, on the 3rd of May, 51, King George VI declared the festival open from the steps of what building? St Paul's Cathedral. Yes, festival events held outside London included an exhibition of industrial power staged in which city? Let's go. Yep. What name was given to the futuristic-looking vertical feature built around a steel frame and supported on cables that became a very popular exhibit? Scarlon. Yep. Which village on the Nottingham Derbyshire border was chosen as the official festival village? Trowel. Yes. Which Lewis Carroll character was depicted in a large sculpture to symbolise the eccentric genius of the English character? White Knight. Yep. What was the only part of the festival where commercialism and sponsorship were allowed? The Battersea Pleasure Garden. Yes. Which of the South Bank structures was the only one intended to remain after the site was cleared? It was the first public building built in London after the Second World War. Royal Festival Hall. Yes. What was the title of the enormous sculpture by the artist Siegfried Charou that depicted a man, woman and child? The Islanders. Yep. Who was appointed Director of Architecture for the festival in 1948 with responsibility for planning everything from the Dome of Discovery to the litter bins? Hugh Casson. Yes. What was the name of the decommissioned Royal Navy carrier that was converted to serve as a floating festival exhibition? Campania. Yep. The South Bank structure that showed the most advanced design was the Dome of Discovery. The frame and cladding was chiefly made from what? Aluminium. Yes. What badly bombed district of London's East End was chosen for rebuilding as a live architecture exhibition intended to show British achievement in architecture and town planning? Poplar. Is correct. No passes, Mark. You scored... 13 points. <laughs> and our final contender, please. And your name is? Brian Davis. 
your occupation. Civil servant. And your chosen subject. The life of William Wilberforce. The politician who dedicated his life to ending slavery. 90 seconds starting now. Wilberforce was first elected as an MP in 1780 for which borough? Uh, Hull. Yep. Who wrote an inquiry into the effects of putting a stop to the African slave trade? It was a key factor in the start of the abolitionist movement and to Wilberforce leading it in Parliament. Ramsey. Yep. What modern-day West African country did Wilberforce and his colleagues help to create it when it was set up as a home for freed slaves in the 1790s? Sierra Leone. Yes. The book The Rise and Progress of Religion in the Soul was a big influence on Wilberforce's conversion to Christianity. Who wrote it? Philip Doddridge. Yep. In 1793, he unsuccessfully tried to add clauses to a company's charter requiring them to promote Christianity. Which company? East India Company. Yep. For what rotten borough in Sussex was he returned as MP in 1812 after he'd represented Yorkshire for 28 years? Bramber. Yes. Which sea captain did Wilberforce name in Parliament for cruelty to a slave? It led to the sea captain being tried for murder. Kimber. Yes. Who was Prime Minister in 1807 when the Commons voted in favour of the Slave Trade Abolition Bill after nearly 20 years of campaigning led by Wilberforce. Grenville. Yeah. Wilberforce met the Russian Tsar in 1814 and urged him to abolish slavery after the Napoleonic Wars. What was the Tsar's name? Alexander. Yep. Wilberforce had intestinal problems and was prescribed a drug that he used for the rest of his life. What drug? Opium. Yep. Which Caribbean kingdom was run briefly by the former slave Henri Christophe who asked for Wilberforce's help to educate his people? Yes. Which evangelical MP did the ageing Wilberforce choose in 1821 as his successor to lead the fight for the total emancipation of slaves in British territories? Al Buxton. Yes. And your time is up. You have scored, with no passes, Brian, 12 points. Thank you. That's the end of our first round on specialist subjects, high-scoring round two. We now move on to the general knowledge round, so it's time to ask our five semi-finalists to rejoin us back in the studio. And at this stage, of course, our five contenders do not know how each other have performed in the first round. So let's put them out of their misery and tell them in fifth place, seven points, Roy. Joint third place, 11 points apiece, Nicholas and Sue. Second place, 12 points, Brian. First place, 13 points, Mark. They will now each get two minutes of questions on their general knowledge, and if there is a tie at the end of the round, then the person with the fewer passes is the winner. So let's go on with it. And ask Roy to join us again, please. And uh, you start this round, Roy, with seven points. You have two minutes of general knowledge starting now. Which religious organisation has its worldwide headquarters in Salt Lake City, Utah? Mormons. Yep. Which television reality series is partly set in a villa called Casa Amor? Levant. Yep. Thomas Edison recited the first line of which nursery rhyme into his first successful phonograph recording in 1877? We had a little lamp. Yes. Fives and Threes is a popular version of which pub game? Dominoes. Yep. Whom did Boris Yeltsin name as Russia's acting Prime Minister in 1999? He then became acting President when Yeltsin resigned at the end of the year. Pass. What is the title of Philippa Gregory's novel about Elizabeth Woodville, the wife of Edward IV? It's the first of a series, The Cousins' War. Pass. What did Gertrude Jekyll famously design? She created some 400 in the UK, Europe and America before her death in 1932. Pass. The word brouhaha, used to describe an unnecessary commotion or clamour, comes from which language? French. Yes. Which planet, the seventh in distance from the Sun, is the least massive of the four giant or Jovian planets? The others are Jupiter, Saturn and Neptune. Uranus. Yes. In 2018, the jockey Davy Russell won the Grand National for the first time at his 14th attempt. What's the name of the horse he was riding? Pass. In 1907, in which city's Academy of Fine Arts did Adolf Hitler fail to gain entry? He went on to make a living in the city painting postcards and pictures. Really? Vienna. Which internal organs of an animal are called lights in the butchery trade? Pass. What close relative of the weasel is also known as an ermine, a term more familiarly applied to its white winter coat used to decorate the robes of judges and peers? Mink. Stoked. The Hajj is a pilgrimage to a holy city that every adult Muslim is expected to make at least once during his or her lifetime. Which city? 
Mecca. Yeah. In a referendum held in March 2016, a Commonwealth country voted against the replacement of the Union Jack by a silver fern on its national flag. Which country? Zoom. Yes. Which port in southwest Norway is the country's second largest city and is notable for the wooden buildings along its waterfront that were declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1979? Stavanger. It was Bergen. Uh, five passes, Roy. The lights are the lungs. Tiger Roll was the name of that horse that Davy Russell rode. Gertrude Jekyll designed Gardens. The White Queen was the title of Philippa Gregory's novel. And you'll kick yourself with this one. Uh, Boris Yeltsin named Vladimir Putin. That's it, yeah. <laughs> there we go. You've scored a total now, Roy, of 15 points. <laughs> And now, Nicholas, again, please. And you have 11 points. As things stand, Nicholas, 15 the score to beat. Let's see how you do with two minutes of general knowledge. What name is given to the mathematical instrument, typically in the shape of a flat semicircle, used in geometry to measure or draw angles on paper? Protractor. Yep. Yeah. In which country is the town of Pilsen that has given its name to Pilsner-style beers? Czech Republic. Yep. Yeah. Which prominent figure of the Cuban Revolution was the president of the Cuban National Bank and Minister of Industry? Uh... Castro. Che Guevara. The chemical symbol D denotes an isotope that has a mass number two and is also known as heavy hydrogen. Which isotope? Helium. Deuterium. Which long-running series of music compilation albums reached its 100th edition in July 2018, 35 years after the first edition? Now that's what I call music. Yep. In which country was the Zeitz Mokar Contemporary Art Museum that has been dubbed Africa's Tate Modern, opened in 2017 in a converted grain silo? Nigeria. South Africa. The nomadic horsemen and cowboys of the South American Pampas are known by a name thought to come from a South American Indian language. What name? Gaucheros. Gauchos. The pickled green buds of which Mediterranean plant are used in tartar sauce? Uh, capers. Yes. Which fossils that usually have the form of flat, grooved spirals are also called snake stones because they were once thought to be petrified, curled-up snakes? Uh, pass. Who plays the former Liberal Party leader Jeremy Thorpe in the 2018 television drama series A Very English Scandal? Hugh Grant. Yes. Francesco Molinari became the first player from which country to win one of golf's majors by winning the Open Championship at Carnoustie? Mexico. Italy. In grammar, the possessive case of a noun or pronoun is also known by what formal name? Subjunctive. The genitive. Who founded Pakistan's PTI party in 1996 and led it to victory with most seats gained in the country's general election held in July 2000? 2018. Imran Khan. Yes. What lay and clerical theologically conservative Catholic organization founded in Spain in 1928 has a Latin name that means work of God? Opus Dei. Yes. What language closely related to Cornish and Welsh is spoken in northwestern France? Breton. He is correct. You had just one pass. Those fossils that are called snake stones were ammonites. <laughs> yeah. Nicholas, you've scored 19 points. <laughs> And now, Sue, again, please. And you start out with 11 points, Sue, and, as you have just heard, 19 is the score to beat. Here we go. Which river flows past Windsor Castle and Hampton Court on its way to the North Sea? Thames. Yes, the name of what Mexican dish comes from the Nahutal Indian words for avocado and sauce? Guacamole. Yep. Which Irish singer and songwriter topped the American charts in 1972 with Alone Again? Naturally, it also became a number three hit in the UK. Gilbert O'Sullivan. Yes. Which Italian poet and philosopher who was born in Florence in 1265 is best known for his epic poem Divina Commedia? Dante. Yes. The Representation of the People Act 1918 gave women over the age of 30 who met a property qualification the right to do what for the first time? Vote. Yes. What name for a food poisoning whose symptoms include paralysis of the facial muscles and can be fatal comes from the Latin for sausage? Botulism. Yes. Which 19th century artist is known for his paintings of animals, including the old shepherd's chief mourner, which depicts a dog with its head on its master's coffin? Lancer. Yes. Which Radio 2 DJ includes a potmaster quiz and a section called Tracks of My Years on his morning show? Cambridge. Yes. What term is used in film for the interruption of the narrative to show something that took place earlier? Flashback. Yep. Catherine of Braganza was the Portuguese-born wife of an English king who ruled from 1660 to 1685. Which king? 
Charles II. Yes, what to him originally used in First World War trench warfare now commonly describes behaviour that is beyond reasonable or accepted limits. Over the top. Yes. Nishiren, Pure Land and Tendai are among the main schools of Buddhism in an Asian country into which the religion was introduced in the middle of the 6th century. Which country? Japan. Yes, who fought in both of the World Heavyweight Championship boxing contests known as the Rumble in the Jungle and the Thriller in Manila. Muhammad Ali. Yes, what plant with showy white flowers and a heavy scent is named after an 18th century Scottish-born botanist? It features in the lyric of The Girl That I Married from the musical Annie Get Your Gun. Philadelphus. Gardenia. Which American president's nickname W comes from a way of pronouncing his middle initial with a Texas drawl? George W. Bush. He is correct, and what a shame you got Gardenia wrong, <laughs> because you'd have had them all right. Otherwise, as it is, Sue, you have got a whopping 25 points. <laughs> and now, Brian, again, please. <laughs> And you're smiling as you walk out, Brian, because <laughs> you've got 12 think... points that you know you've got a lot to go, eh? Think of the task in front of me. Absolutely. Yes. Here we go. What type of wooden canvas folding chair gets its name because it was originally used on sea cruises? Deck it's chair. now used in the garden and on the beach. Deck chairs, Deck correct. Chair. Munich is the capital of which German state? Bavaria. Yep. Isaac Watts was an English nonconformist minister who lived from 1674 to 1748. He was the author of over 700 of what form of sacred song? Um, hymns. Yes. Which English ceramic artist was born near Stoke-on-Trent in 1899? Among her well-known designs are Bizarre and Crocus. Um, uh, Grace and Perry. Clarice Cliff. What is the name of the ferry port that lies on Morecambe Bay, just south of Morecambe itself? There are regular sailings from there to Douglas on the Isle of Man. Haitian. Yeah. Which political party chose its fourth full-time leader in just over 18 months in April 2018 when Gerard Batten was elected unopposed? UK. Yeah. Which British soul singer topped the charts with his first two albums, No Parley, in 1983, and The Secret of Association two years later? Uh, Stevie Wonder. Paul Young. What was the name of the device that was used to mix petrol and air in a car engine before the introduction of fuel injection? Carburetor. Yes. In football, the VAR is a system to help adjudicate on certain types of decision during a game. What do the initials stand for? Video assistant referee. Yes. Which companion of Alexander Dumas' Three Musketeers is based on a real-life captain of the Musketeers who served under Louis XIV? D'Artagnan. Correct. In which Scandinavian police drama, first shown in the UK in 2012, does Sophia Helin play Sag Noren, a socially awkward investigator with the Malmo police. Organ. No, the bridge. What temperature was recorded for the first time in Britain at Heathrow Airport on the 10th of August 2003? 100 degrees Fahrenheit, the equivalent of it. Correct. What name is given to the nest of a bird of prey, especially that of an eagle on a mountainside or cliff? Erie. Yes. Who was in command of HMS Bounty at the time of the mutiny of April 1789? William Bly. Yes. What late 19th century word is now commonly used for any type of very tall building with many stories? Skyscraper. Yes. What is the name of the Italian brandy distilled from the skins, pips and stalks left over from the making of wine? Rapper. Is correct. Brian, uh, you have no passes. You have scored... 25 points. <laughs> you. And finally, Mark again, please. And Mark, you start out with 13 points. 25 is the score to beat. Right. Got a place in the final. Here we go. What is the name of the Soviet cosmonaut who became the first man to travel into space in April 1961? Gagarin. Correct. In which city in northern Spain does the Fiesta de San Fermín take place in July? It includes the running of the bulls through its streets to the bull ring. Pamplona. Yep. What cabinet post was held by Hillary Clinton during Barack Obama's first presidency and by John Kerry during his second? Secretary of State. Yep. What name is given to the clear, savoury jelly sometimes used to coat foods such as cold meat or fish? Agar. Aspic. Which England fast bowler was born in Burnley in 1982 and plays his county cricket for Lancashire? Cook. Anderson. Which poet and playwright said to have engaged in wit combat with his older contemporary, William Shakespeare? 
Johnson. Yes. Jim Morrison, John Densmore, Robbie Krieger and Ray Manzarek were all members of what band? The Doors. Yep. What word for a rascal was used for a white southerner who supported the Republican Party and its policy of black emancipation after the American Civil War? Scallywag. Yes. What was the name of Oliver Cromwell's oldest surviving son who briefly succeeded him as Lord Protector of England in 1658? Richard. Yep. Which part of the natural world was inhabited by the nymphs known as Nereids, according to Greek mythology? Water. Yep. What was the first product advertised on ITV in September 1955? It had the brand name Gibbs SR. Toothpaste. Yes. What is the name of the Gibraltar-born fashion designer who was presented with the French Légion of Honour in 2009 but had it revoked in 2012 after he made anti-Semitic remarks in a Paris cafe? Galliano. Yes. Which Yorkshire city is connected to Liverpool by a 127-mile-long canal whose features include Wigan Pier and the Bingley Five Rise Lock Staircase? Leeds. Yes. What name of Latin origin is given to that part of the skull that encloses and protects the brain? Cranium. Yes. What geological and geographical features are studied in the scientific discipline of speleology. Caves. Correct. What local radio station hired Steve Coogan's character, Alan Partridge, to present its early morning show after the demise of his chat show, Knowing Me, Knowing You? Radio Anglia. No, it was Radio Norwich. But it doesn't matter, Mark, because you have scored 26 points and you're the winner. <laughs> Well, what a contest. Let's have a look at all of those scores. In fifth place with 15 points, Roy. Fourth place with 19 points, Nicholas. Joint second place, 25 points apiece, Sue and Brian. First place with a remarkable 26 points, Mark. Which means, of course, that Mark is tonight's winner and he goes through to the grand final. Congratulations to him. And if you would like to be a contender in the next series, do go to our website, bbc.co.uk stroke mastermind, and you can follow us on Twitter at Mastermind Quiz. And do join us again next time for more Mastermind. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.